It doesn't take an extraordinary person to overcome amazing odds. It's your choice whether or not you get up and fight and continue to work hard for what you want. Okay, so you can zoom in and out. It started out as being something that I want to show to the people in the community so that we kind of start to change our ideas of ourselves. There is a quote, like I believe in it so much. It says like, if you want to do something, just believe in yourself and that's actually what I'm doing. These three impressive teens don't quite fit the stereotype. <laughs> sure, they like their selfies, but they're not shallow, not apathetic. It's a nice building. Yeah. They've each faced major adversity head on, adapted. One, two, three, four. Now inspire their own communities. <laughs> Grade 12 student Kardisha Provo loves her community, one of Canada's oldest, a terminus of the Underground Railroad. But outsiders rarely talk about the good. It's like, oh, I don't want to go there, or I don't want my kids to be in that place. They think it's, it's dangerous. Bad, right? They think of danger in that if you walk around here, you might get shot. Or, yeah. You know, that's kind of things that I've heard people say. The RCMP is investigating after multiple gunshots were heard last night and this morning in North Preston. North Preston has known violence. It came to define the place. And that inspired Kardisha to redefine how the area is seen, largely for those who live here, becoming a one-woman video blogger, the voice of North Preston. Hi, my name is Kardija Provo. I'm from North Preston and I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about what it means to be from North Preston. It's an all-black community and often in the world, black people are labeled as being violent, being um, people who won't amount to things, uneducated, all of those, those things um, dangerous. So you're pushing back against that? Yeah. And trying to do that in the most positive way possible. What's your name? But the top student and student council member is about to leave, off to university in Toronto. You're going to be in front of the camera. Can everybody see me and hear me? So she's teaching others how to write their own history. <laughs> Good. <laughs> what can I do to better this? And I kind of wanted to change that narrative and kind of show each other a different perspective and show each other our own perspectives and kind of like shed a positive light on the successes of our people. Across the country in Calgary is another tight-knit community that's inspired one of its own to give back. Three years ago, Alex McEwen walked into Bones High School and then everything changed. Yeah, on my birthday, uh, December 21st, 2015. What happened? Um, me and a bunch of friends had decided that instead of sitting inside and playing video games all day, we were going to go uh, tobogganing. So we go out to the regular tobogganing hill and uh, my sled decided to spin out and I went head first at about 30 miles per hour into a light post, uh, fracturing my spine in four places and compressing it. At 15, Alex was paralyzed, and at first it meant loss, an end to rugby, to basketball, to football. No more army cadets, no more playing the bagpipes. It was tough in general to see what my life was and see what my life had become. I'll do all the drawing if you'd like. But Alex decided early on he wouldn't be defined by his injury. Tell me about who you are today. Um, I am an avid sportsman still. I play uh, wheelchair basketball and sledge hockey. I uh, go to school full time and I plan to go to university next year. And uh, right now I'm just trying to live a normal teenage life and kind of readdress to life after my injury. You have a job? Yes, I work at a locally owned, locally operated uh, grocery store called The Bonesian. Find everything all right today? A lot of companies find it difficult to uh, take on someone with a disability. As I started looking for a job uh, three weeks out of the hospital and I didn't find one until December of 2017. So it, it was a long road and it gave me an opportunity to live a normal life. Have a good day. Take care. Not even three years after his accident, he's talking and listening to others suddenly adjusting to paralysis. A lot of the times I talk to them about the bad days because uh, I don't think people allow themselves to have the bad days enough. No one's saying you have to have a, an amazing day every single day, but uh, when you have those bad days, you can't let them define your life. 
How do you not dwell on it? Hope, really. It's, it's, it's it, hope and a choice. Um, I choose to believe that the next day will bring something better than this day has. Uh, and I hope that I'm right. So I gotta do five and you have to do three. Alex has been so helped by his teachers, he plans to become one now. He's off to university in the fall. First though, comes graduation, and Alex has a carefully planned surprise in store. One he's worked on for months, to walk across the stage. Alex McEwen. To walk for the first time since his accident. I was able to use uh, an advanced machine called an exoskeleton, which is just a metal skeleton that goes along the outside of your body and uses uh, electric power to uh, stand you up and walk you as if there was uh, no spinal cord injury present. It was a huge moment. I've had a few times in my life where I've been pushed down and I've needed to really fight to get myself back up and I, I try to make sure that other people know that they're strong enough to do the same thing. Strong enough to persevere, Saja Al Badawi knows all about staying strong. Her steps into high school in Regina meant walking away from her past and into her future. For Saja, the extraordinary is found in the everyday. A first period dance class would have been unthinkable for her just a few years ago. I thank God every day because he gave me like this life. Because for 10 years it was like really tough. And now my life is getting better. It's when I was in Iraq with my brother. Saja's life began in Iraq, just before the horrendous violence which followed the American invasion. This picture, I think it was first grade. There's a whole class picture. Yeah, it's in Iraq. A serious death threat led to an abrupt departure, but she couldn't tell anyone. My best friend, like when we had to leave Iraq to Syria, I didn't tell her like I'm leaving. So, oh my God, I'm gonna cry, no. <laughs> Why was that hard? Because when I arrived to Syria, I called her and they told me she died. Many more friends would be killed in bombings. This picture is in Syria. And soon the relative safety of Syria would become just as dangerous as Iraq. You've been in two wars right in the middle of it. Mm. Did you ever think things would get better? Mm. I don't know, like I was always hoping for that, but I don't know. Because we're moving a lot, that's a sign it's not getting better, so. When you got to Canada, what did you think in those first days, those first weeks? I was telling my parents, like, I want to live this moment when you like close your eyes and then open it like in different country. So I actually I tried this in Toronto. So when we get to the airport, I close my eyes and then I open it, I was like, we're in Canada now. <laughs> you gotta do this. She's excelled, a volunteer helping other new Canadians, helping at the Humane Society, working with sick kids in hospital. Can I ask you about your marks? Yeah, they're good. They're good? Yeah. Okay. My average this year is 91 point something. What's next? I will do my degree on nursing. After that, uh, I want to apply for medical school. I want to do something for my future. And that's also because my parents are supporting me all the time, like my whole family. Finally, our family found like, a safe place to be in. And you can breathe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With Saja, Kardisha, and Alex, Canada has new young leaders emerging. There you have it, a snapshot of the class of 2018. David Common, CBC News, Calgary.